11, 2019, and it is now 6 p.m. My name is John Link, Supervisor with the DEM Division of Marine Fisheries. I'm here tonight to officiate this hearing regarding proposed amendments to Rhode Island Marine Fisheries Regulations on behalf of DEM Director Janet Elcoy. With me today from the Division of Marine Fisheries are Pete Duhamel, Nicole Costa, uh, Anna Gerber-Williams, Scott Olszewski, Chris Parkins, Julia Livermore, Connor McManus, uh, Christina Hofsmith, and Bob Ballou, and a member of enforcement, I don't know your name, sir. Dave White. Dave White, thank you. Um, tonight's hearing concerns proposed amendments to the four, to four RI Marine Regulations, Fishery Regulations, Part 3, Fin Fish, Part 4, Shellfish, Part 5, Lobster, crabs and other crustaceans, and part six, general, general equipment provisions. Concerning several, concerning several individual regulatory proposals and which were publicly noticed on February 27th, pursuant to procedural requirements of Rhode Island General Laws, chapter 42-35, administrative procedures, and the office of the Rhode Island Secretary of State, under the authority of the Rhode Island General Law, chapters 42-17.1. Pursuant to the Administrative Procedures Act, annotated regulations showing proposed changes have been filed with the Secretary of State's office at the time of the noticing, and which are provided on both the Secretary of State's and Division's webpage. Interested persons are strongly encouraged to review those documents to fully understand the proposals brought forward here tonight. The purpose of this hearing is to afford interested party an opportunity to submit data, opinions, and or arguments concerning the proposed rulemaking or how such proposed actions can be changed to minimize the impact on those affected while still achieving the required goals. This hearing is not a forum for discussing, debating, arguing, or otherwise having any dialogue. Please limit any questions to clarifying questions only. For tonight's hearing, the division will provide a PowerPoint presentation summarizing each of the proposals. Again, you're encouraged to review the annotated regulations and the public notice. For each hearing item, the following process will be observed. First, the chair will recognize speakers. Second, no more than five minutes will be allowed for a presentation, a presentation or comments. And third, when you are recognized, please clearly identify yourself by name and affiliation, if any, provide your comments, if desired, provide a written comment of your statement. If comments are extensive, <coughs> extensive, it is strongly encouraged that comments be provided in writing in order to assure that the record is clear. The public comment period will conclude at 4 p.m. Oh, sorry, will conclude on, on March the 30th at 4 p.m. The record of this public hearing and comments will be provided to the Rhode Island Marine Fisheries Council for consideration at their meeting on April 1st and on May the 6th, at which time the council will provide a recommendation to the director on each item. The director has the option to file the rules and regulations with the Secretary of State as is, file the rules and regulations with minor changes, or make additional amendments to the rules and regulations and hold a new public hearing. If filed, these rules and regulations become effective 20 days after filing and have the effect of law. Prior to the hearing comments, prior to the hearing comments, the following exhibits are noted for the record. Exhibit one is a copy of the public notice and annotated regulations that were filed with the Secretary of State on October 19th. Exhibits two through four are comments received to date. Exhibit two is a written comment from the Arc Bait Company regarding Menhaden management. Exhibit three is a written comment. From, the Nancy, from Nancy Scarduzio of the Secretary of State Office regarding a minor technical revision to the regulatory language for commercial black sea bass. Exhibit four is a written comment from Rich Hittinger regarding the proposed special shore provision for recreational summer flounder management. And just again to, to uh, kind of codify the statement before, we have a lot of slides to get through tonight. It's a big hearing. So we really want you to limit your questions to clarifying only. We will not be going into detail about any of the uh, proposed changes. Your yeah, comment period is good until March the 30th. Uh, feel free to give uh, anyone on staff uh, at Marine Fisheries a call if you want to dig deeper, or feel free to go into the regulation themselves. We'd really like to get through this uh, in a timely fashion. So let's move on to the PowerPoint. Oh yeah, and one, one other thing, we have a slight agenda change. 
We are uh, moving uh, item 8, 2019 Recreational Summer Flounder Management, Part 3, Section 3.10.1, up to the uh, first item for consideration. So first off, important dates. As mentioned before, the March 30th is the end of the public comment period. You have up until then to submit a public comment. April 1st is our first of two Rhode Island Marine Fisheries Council meetings. Uh, we've split them into two because it would be a very long agenda otherwise. Uh, that item will, have cons will, ha will cover all regulatory items related to finfish. Uh, the next council meeting will be on May 6th and that will be the uh, remaining regulations to be considered and other items to be determined. So the first item up for uh, comment is for our Summer Flounder 2019 Recreational Management. We have uh, two proposals. One is, uh, is, the, is the, the general season, which is uh, status quo, 19 inch minimum size, season from May 1st to December 31st, six fish possession limit. We also have a second proposal that would provide an option for a special shore provision, provision for summer flounder. Uh, that would allow a 16 inch fluke to be caught at between, uh, it says on the slide May 1st to May 31st. We've actually run the, the numbers through our models and have determined that if we want to stay within our target range for the recreational catch for fluke, uh, for this year, we would have to start the special shore provision on May the 3rd, not May the 1st. So two days, not a big difference there, but I want to let people know that, that we did run those numbers. Uh, that special shore provision would allow for two fish at 16 inches. Uh, we would still need to have this be vetted by the ASMFC Technical Committee, and it may delay our uh, ability to, uh, to put this out there in 2019 immediately. Um, also, it should be noted that this special shore provision would be allowed at the same places we allow the shorter scup provision to take place, and the locations are listed right there. So right now I take any comment on rec 2019 Recreational Summer Flounder. <coughs> Steve. Yeah, Steve Medeiros, the Rhode Island Salt Water Rangers Association. We, as the association, we sponsor, yeah, we, sponsor. we support um, option one and two. Thank you. Rich. Uh, Rich Hittinger, uh, Rhode Island Saltwater Anglers. Uh, the reason for the uh, proposal for the 16 inch uh, shore fish is simply that uh, I have heard from a lot of shore fishermen that uh, with the size, the minimum size going up on fluke uh, at 19 inches, it's virtually impossible for them to catch keeper size. Um, they, they can catch a lot of smaller fish. Um, they can catch a few over 16 inch, uh, and basically uh, very, very difficult to get a 19 inch fish. Uh, the, the, the very small numbers of fish that would be caught from shore between 16 and 19 inches, I think uh, uh, the division has gone through an analysis of that. It's, uh, it's a minimal number of fish, but it would really bring um, a lot of shore fishermen back into the fishery, allow them uh, two fish per person to take home for dinner. Uh, so, so obviously I support proposal one and two. Thank you. Dave? I'm Dave Monty, I'm a, a council member, so this is not a comment, it's just a point of clarification. So the shore angler, if both of these were to pass, the shore angler would be able to take theoretically two 16 inch fish as well as six 19 inch fish? We'll have to look into that. Um, if you, I mean, we'll, we'll look into that. But I do think the analysis was done on additional fish, like these 16 inch fish would be in addition to what is normally caught. I think that's the way the model was run, but I'm not. That's my understanding too, yeah. I'd like to clarify with Jay. Anyone else for recreational fluke? Okay, moving on to uh, Summer Flounder 2019 commercial uh, management. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, share some good news that we have on this particular uh, particular uh, 
item. And that is we just received today a uh, notification that in fact uh, we, are, we are going to receive an increase in our quota, our, our quota allotment for summer flounder for 2019. In fact, we are receiving a large increase. It's 73% increase equal to 1.7 million pounds. We have done some analysis at the division and it has been determined that if, if with, with this new uh, amount of quota, the commercial summer period would not need to nece would not necessarily have to have any days out. It could go for the full seven days during the week. Please keep that in mind when considering not only these options, but also the coming black sea bass options. One other thing important to say is uh, the division had no knowledge that this was going to go through prior to this hearing. So we don't have an option for all three days being all seven days of the week being open. If, uh, if that is your desired, uh, your desired out outcome of the uh, hearing, of the regulations, feel free, please feel free to comment that you would like to have all seven days open. Uh, that being said, let me go through the options. <clears throat> option one is uh, status quo. Option two is to uh, reopen on Sunday during the summer period. Option three is to reopen Friday and Sunday during the summer period. Oh, Option four is to reopen on Saturday and Sunday during the summer period. And again, we do not have an option for seven days open during the week. Any comments on commercial summer plan? Would the uh, limit stay the same if it was open for the seven days? Would it still be? Uh, right now, uh, per reg, it is uh, slated to open at 50. Uh, my understanding is that question will be put to the council, what to open at. We would support Town Dock. We would support seven days, seven days a week being open. Yes. Seven days. Seven days. And please state your name and any oh. affiliation if you have it, please. Josiah Dodge, commercial fisherman. Thank you. Yes, Don. Val Fox. <clears throat> I'm speaking for myself. I would like to see it seven days. Yes, Rich. Uh, yeah. Rich Hittinger. I, I just wanted to make a little clarification. I was on the council when we went uh, and uh, eliminated Saturday, or Friday and Saturday initially. And the reason for that was to try and extend the quota so that the season wouldn't close partway through. Um, but I noticed that all the slides here for the summer period have 50 pound starting possession limit. Um, when we first went to five days a week, uh, it was 100 pounds. Does that have to be stated uh, on here? Because I, I see the 50, <coughs> and I think that an option before the council should be, rather than opening all seven days, open, I don't know, six or five, and go to 100 pounds. Duly noted, uh, but the way we, uh, just so you know though, the way we can work with our possession limits is we could open it at 50 pounds and the next day turn around and open it up at 100 pounds. Right now, okay. opening at 50 pounds is what's on the regulations. Okay. Yes? Lots of zinc, out of lots. Uh, we support seven days. Yes? Brandon Lake, I support seven days. Oh, Ron Kenyon, I have a clarifying question. Uh, if the quota increase is seventy three percent, do you by chance know what it was and now what it is? Just numbers. Uh, I have in my notes that we're getting one point seven additional million pounds. I didn't do the math and, and add that up. Uh, from about a million. Sorry? It was about, it's been about a million, now it's going up to one point seven. So it's going up to one point seven. Thank you. Oh, there you go, sorry. I'm James Perkins, commercial fisherman. I support seven days. John Hockey and Wakefield, support seven days. And in the back? Yeah, Joe McCarry, commercial fisherman. I support seven days. Yes. Ray Joe, commercial fisherman. I support seven days. Pal Eagles, support seven days. <laughs> Kevin Sullivan, I support the seven days. Mm -hmm. 
Any other comments on commercial summer flounder? Let's move on to Black Sea Bass 2019 Recreational Management. <clears throat> uh, right now, there were no new amendments proposed for 2019. This is, this, uh, this is for status quo. 15 inch fish, season outlined, broken into three blocks, three fish, seven fish, depending on the season. Any comments on recreational Black Sea Bass? Yes. I mean, I, I guess you don't have any amendments but for people that just have a bay boat, uh, that's off a late start because the sea bass basically leave the middle and upper bay by the end of June. So that's only giving you one week to get a bay boat. Gotcha. Could I have your name, sir? Excuse me? Could you state your name, sir? Evan Porter. Steve, Steve Madeira. So we grudgingly support this even though we tried it earlier. We understand next year. Uh, Rich Hittinger, uh, I, I would support in the future an earlier start date uh, for black <coughs> sea bass. Uh, and the, there are several reasons for that. Um, like Ed said, the larger black sea bass are inshore early, uh, so you, you can catch them in early June. Um, uh, that's one reason. The other is because our neighboring states both open in early May. Uh, Massachusetts opens, I believe it's the second week of May, and Connecticut the same. Uh, with us not being able to take uh, any black sea bass until June 24th, it means that when we're fluke fishing in, in uh, May and early June, um, you're catching a lot of large black sea bass that can't keep, they got to be released. So if it can't be done for this year, I'd, I'd recommend that we try and put into motion an earlier start date for next year. Thank you. Yes. Craig Pellinance from the Ryland Party and Tribal Association. I just wanted to put on the record that that fall season is important to our industry. And um, as we look to change regulations for sea bass, just keep that in mind. That that's an important part for us as well. And we catch big fish at that point. So it's a kind of give and take. Thank you. Doug, the fish are also aware of angles, and I'd like to point out that that 623 opening is very, very <coughs> disturbing uh, for recreational fishermen of the day. <coughs> Any other comments on recreational black sea bass? Okay, moving on to uh, 2019 commercial black sea bass management. <clears throat> we, have, uh, we have three options here. Uh, first one is for uh, status quo. Second is an industry proposal, which would combine uh, the, the spring and summer periods, as well as the fall and winter one periods. And then the third option is also an industry proposal. And this is the one I, I said to think about with, uh, with what may happen with Fluke next year. This proposal was to, uh, an industry proposal, to align the closed days for black sea bass with the closed days for summer flower. Take any comments on commercial black sea bass? Yes, Kate. Katie Almeida with Town Dock, who supports status quo black sea bass. Okay. Oh. Donald Fox again speaking for myself. Um, I, I, I would support status quo too. I'm not crazy about this option here. And option two, it seems to me like if you open it up May 1st, uh, you change those periods and have it run until July 31st, that 44% could be long gone. At least you're, you have a fishery every month for some time the way it's done presently. You could be shut off before the end of June until September with that option too. Thank you. Yes. Adam Lotz, we support option two with the change of the fluke regulations impending because there won't be any closed dates. So we support option two. Option two. Yes. James Perkins, support option two. 
in the back. Uh, yeah. Ken Margo, commercial fisherman. I support option two. Um, combining the July, as currently constructed, the May. The quota in May usually runs through mid June. We shut down for two weeks and open up again July 1st. Soon after that, Massachusetts opens with their bigger limits and negatively affects the market. So I support moving the July subsequent period quota into May because we should run about till the end of June and be closing down right when Massachusetts starts. So we'll we get more money for our allocation of fish. And also that two week shutdown, I, I see it as inefficient. People have pots in the water, they sit there, they're at high risk of gear loss when your gear sits for two weeks. So I think it would be a more efficient for the fishery to for option two. <coughs> Anyone else? Up the day? Kevin Sullivan, I support option two. Al Eagle, support option two. Anyone else for commercial black sea bass? Yes. Just had a uh, status quo. So, yeah. The whole part of the open is great for the guys in the bay, the guys down the south, the Wesley area. Lose our fishery just because the way it works. We show up earlier here. Right. I'm great, Joe, and I support status quo. Yeah, Joe Curry, I support option one status quo. Yes, Joe Matei, support option one status quo. Very much, Rally, status quo. Matt Kearns, I support option two. Yes, John McDonald, option two. Over there. Steve Katkowski, option one. Yep, over there. Richard Chapel, option one, that's well. Sounds like Alice, for the fisherman, option two. Sylvester, option two. <coughs> Ian Egan, option two. Any other comments for commercial sea bass? Okay, so let's move on to uh, 2019 recreational scup management. We have uh, four uh, four options here. Uh, first one is for status quo. The second one is to have an earlier opening date, opening up on January 1st, basically all year. Uh, option three would be to increase the possession limit for party and charter. During the uh, during September and October, up to 50 fish from 45. Option four would be to amend the uh, season of possession for a party charter, such that we have uh, we have a a bonus season, a 50 fish season for May and June, 30 fish for July and August, and then back up to 50 for September and October. And then the last option, five, is to uh, have uh, increased the possession limit for a party charter up to a 50 fish bonus season for the September, October, November, and December months. Any comments on recreational scout? Yes, you yeah, support option two. <coughs> option C. Yeah. Any other comments for recreational scout? Clarification question, sure. Is the only year-round opening option two? Yes, that's the only year-round opening. on recreational scum. Yeah, I don't support any of them. <laughs> the, the intent was to make the fishery a year-round fishery. 
The federal permit holders are 50 fish year round at nine inches. With my understanding, we we're gonna try and keep it open year round at 30 fish and then increase the bonus season. Right now, all we've, we've got here is a five fish increase for the bonus season. We're under quota by about 30%. We're not even coming close to catching the fish, so I, I don't think this is what was presented at the, the workshop. I could be wrong. I was under the impression we were trying to get a year-round fishery. Anyone else for recreational stuff? All right, moving on. Okay, so this is uh, the next one is for commercial scup gear based possession limit thresholds. And this would adjust the commercial scup gear based possession limit thresholds to be consistent with the final rule published by NOAA Fisheries, uh, effective date January 1st, 2019. Uh, the, the basics of this are that we would go up to from 500 to a 1,000 pound possession limit between October 1st and April the 14th. And, uh, and then uh, greater than 2,000 pounds or more of scup from April 15th through June 15th. The other changes would be that between June 16th and September 30th, it would be 200 pounds. And then there's also the, the same net restrictions that we've always had. Any comments on this commercial scope proposal? There you go, Don. I think this is a great idea, but uh, to me, you need to go with that 2,000 pound uh, limit there. For, you need to go longer than June 15th. Uh, that will be caught past that date on the beach in Charleston, I would suspect. You can do it by going a little bit deeper and uh, the right type of wind would blow them in shore and you might get it. I, I would like to see that go to, say, August 15th. Again, uh, we're not catching that quota either. It's, uh, I'd like to see it go a lot longer than that. What is the rationale of stopping on June 15th rather than going all the way to August? I'd have to clarify with Jason. Yeah. Anyone else for commercial scup gear based possession? All right, the next item is for 2019 recreational striped bass. Uh, there are no amendments proposed. This is status quo 28 inch, one fish possession. Any comments on recreational striped bass? Seeing none. Okay, let's move on to uh, 2019 commercial general category striped bass. We have uh, three options. Option one is status quo, starting on May 20th to August 4th, 70% of the quota. Second period would be starting on August the 5th to the end of the year, 30% of the quota. Option two is a uh, industry proposal, which would, have, which would eliminate the uh, fall period and uh, start on May 20th to December 31st. Option three is also an industry proposal, which would begin on June the 2nd, run until December 31st, also eliminating the fall period. All periods would have five fish per, per person vessel day. Any comments on commercial striped bass management? Uh, John Lanty, option three. Zachary St. Hours, commercial fisherman, option two. <coughs> yeah. 
Ken Murgo, option two. Uh, Steve Katkowski, option one. Yes. Adam Lotz, option two. Ray Clements, option three. Any other comment? Up right there. Richard Chap, option three. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on commercial scrap bags? Moving up. Next item for consideration is 2019 striped bass uh, commercial floating fish trap management. Uh, we have no amendments proposed for 2019. That is status quo, 26 inch fish, starting on April 1st, going to the end of the year, unlimited recession. Any comment on floating fish trap commercial striped bass? All right, seeing none. Moving on to Tata, 2019 party charter possession limit. This is a uh, this, this is a change from that we should have done last year. Uh, recreational possession limit was was amended from six to five fish, as well as extending the season to December 31st as a result of a public hearing, February 2018. These changes were also to apply to the party charter regulations, but were inadvertently missed at that time. And this is us making the correction. Any comments on uh, party charter possession limits for Tatog? Rick? Rick Bellavance, um, at the workshop, I had uh, requested some analysis to look at the, um, the actual impact of six fish versus five, and comparing that to Massachusetts remaining open during the spawning closure at one fish when we're closed at zero, to see if they're comparable my thought that they would be, and I wasn't sure if the analysis got completed or not, but I would be in favor of leaving the bag limit at six. Um, for, um, and that uh, May, uh, October 15th through December 15th. Right. So wait a second, that, well, that's not right either. That's why I wasn't. So it's the, the bottom sub period is supposed to go to a third? Uh, yeah, right. yeah. 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 So the, the bottom was just sub period for. opens up. October 15th, and it was supposed to go to 12:31 at five fish, is what Massachusetts is. But my suggestion was leaving it at six for that period to make up for their having that one fish in the spawning range, because we're trying to get to the same place, I guess. So I don't know if that analysis was done or not, but that's what I would do. I don't believe it's completed right now. Yeah, sure. I'd like to stick to status quo. Part of the reason we did this was to go along with Massachusetts. As Rick mentioned, they did not do the spawning closure, and they also did not implement the uh, mandatory reporting for the four hire vessels. So we were doing this to go along with Mass, but Mass did not go along with us. They just gained two fish out of it in a longer season, and we lost. Just so it's clear to me, this option does run until the end of December, correct? Yes, yes it does. That's a typo. Yes. So I guess um, Rich, Rich Hittinger, uh, recreational fisherman, um, <clears throat> I would think that the five fish is certainly uh, an appropriate correction. Um, right now, Private boats are limited to 10 fish per boat. So if you've got four or six anglers, you have effectively a much lower bag limit than five fish per person because you've got a 10 bag limit uh, on a private boat. Now on a uh, charter boat, if you've got you know a full complement of six people uh, you can take either 36 or 30 uh, to talk currently. Oh, well, currently, I guess it's 36, and if this was corrected, then it would be 30. Uh, 
I think the correction to bring five per person on a charter versus five per person on a private certainly is an appropriate correction. Any other comments on Tatab? Next item is Bluefish 2019 Recreational Management. There have been no amendments proposed for 2019. This is status quo, open year round, no minimum size, 15 fish. Any comments on recreational bluefish? Seeing none, moving on. So the next item is uh, Bluefish 2019 Commercial Bluefish Management. We have three options. Uh, the third option was put forth as a contingency option, uh, just in case there was not a uh, quota transfer from recreational to commercial that was approved by NOAA. We in fact found out today that the uh, transfer has occurred, uh, the, so we do not need to uh, have the option three uh, starting at the decreased possession limit. Uh, right now we have option one, which is status quo, and option two, which would be an increased uh, possession limit for the May uh, from May to November period, and that would be at 8,000 pounds per week, up from 6,000. Any comments on commercial bluefish management? Seeing none, moving on. Uh, the next item is a uh, black nose shark possession limit. Uh, this proposal seeks consistency with the 2019 ASMFC specifications for coastal sharks, which prohibits possession of black-nosed sharks north of the 34 degree north latitude in the commercial fisheries. Our proposed language would add black nose to the list of prohibited sharks and take it off the, uh, and take it off the possession. Any comment on uh, black black-nosed shark possession? Seeing none, moving on. All right, the next, the next item is for uh, COD. It's about the recreational minimum size. This proposal seeks consistency with the 2018 federal specifications for the Georges Bank Recreational COD Fishery. Uh, for our, our proposed language for the minimum size, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but basically what it is saying is that Rhode Island, we will, we will, uh, we will have our minimum size, whichever is whatever the Fed recreational size limit is put forth in the Federal Register 648.89.B. Uh, we also have a change to the possession limit, which would allow vessels in possession of a federal permit to, uh, to have the recreational harvest of cod in the, let me start over. The, the other would be for the possession limit for Vessels with a federal permit authorizing the recreational harvest of cod in federal waters may harvest, possess, or land cod in state waters in the amount equal to the federal regulations. Basically, we're bringing our, our recreational cod measures to be the same as the federal measures. Any comments on recreational cod? Great. Rick Bellavant from the Rhode Island Party and Charter Boat Association. Uh, we support these changes to the cod recreational. Right. Uh, I support the changes to the to red. Any other comments on recreational comments? Seeing none. Okay, moving on to uh, Manhattan 2019 commercial management. Uh, we have several proposals here, and I'll be happy to go back between them if needed. Uh, so the first one is proposal is a division proposal, and this proposal would broaden the commercial vessel restrictions to apply to all commercial vessels other than small scale fisheries and floating fish traps. Currently, the, the regulations only apply to purse seines, uh, and it would uh, not be, like I said, not applicable to small scale, which is defined in rule, as well as floating fish traps. Uh, please see the uh, annotated language for the proposed changes as they are extensive. Option two is an industry proposal to restrict vessel size. Uh, and it, once again, uh, please review the annotated regulations. 
basically they are looking to change the, the fish storage capacity and the vessel length that can pursue the Menhaden fishery. The next one, proposal three, is a division proposal to replace the instances of landing limit with possession limit. Uh, and the rationale here is to still allow for possession once the state quota and episodic has been reached if the management area remained open and prohibit landing. The requirement felt no longer, the requirement was no longer necessary due to amend, uh, amendment three quota increase. And once again, please see the annotated regs for the specific language. Proposal four is an industry proposal to add a reduced possession limit trigger uh, under the state quota program. This, uh, this proposed language would set a trigger of 50% of the quota being reached in order to trigger a limit down to 80,000 pounds per vessel per day. <coughs> proposal five is a division proposal to clarify the transiting rule as it pertains to commercial Menhaden fishery. Uh, this, this proposed language would um, I'll just read it. The transiting proposal in 16C1B of this subchapter does not apply to the commercial Menhaden fishery. Any vessel transiting state waters must abide by the current state possession limit. Basically, if you are a federal permanent vessel and you're coming into Rhode Island state waters, you must abide by our commercial Menhaden limit, regardless of whether fishing or transiting. And proposal six is a division proposal to amend the date of the end of the episodic event set aside program to be consistent with the ASMFC fishery management plan. Uh, this would uh, change the uh, ending of the episodic event uh, set aside program from November 1st to October 31st. Any comments on, uh, on the commercial 2019 Menade management? And if you want me to go back to any of the proposals, I'm happy to do. Yeah, so Richard Sue's a off bay company. Okay. The um, boat one Plymouth that was for a documented vessel of 81 feet, uh, 80 feet. 80 feet, yep, this is a, over there. Uh, vessels shall not exceed 80 feet in length, is the yes, proposal. Yes, so that was a misprint, it's supposed to be documented 80 feet. <coughs> Uh, this was only not that we need any more regulations. The fact that I'm asking for this because uh, for the general public and the perception that a series of boats moving into the bay, larger boats moving into the bay, would uh, create the mindset that all the fish are being caught up in the bay. So if they were to be small vessels instead of, you know, 100 footers, that uh, there wouldn't be as much panic. <laughs> Any other comments on commercial Menhaden management? Yes. Uh, John Daniel. On, uh, let's see here. Number two, you're gonna see Possession or taking of Menhaden by was per saying. Now, uh, you want to put a fishing vessel? <clears throat> well, we don't have to put up the line. I don't have the annotated as yeah, part of my. Uh, well, anyway, it says a fishing vessel um, engaged in the commercial Menhaden fishery. You change the word from per saying to a fishing vessel. Yep, that's correct. Um, well, as of now, you can cast net up there legally, and that would take out cast netting. I mean, I don't have a problem with seeing commercial fishing, but I'd like to have an exemption for a cast net. And in fact, cast net is an exempted uh, gear type under the small scale fishery. It is, so I would be allowed to go into that area. That is correct. <coughs> okay. Question for clarity: What's the uh, vessel length now? The restrictions on the vessel length? Not. Uh, we don't have any 
vessel restrictions for men. In that case, I would support the uh, RFP proposal for the 84 length document, documented length. The reason for doing so is exactly what uh, Rick stated, especially what's taking place with the Heron fishery. It could be uh, quite an influx of large vessels coming in here and cleaning up the resource. So I support his proposal. In the back. Uh, Dennis Singer, commercial fisherman. I support uh, proposal number two, the outdated proposal also. Greg Jolin, commercial fisherman. I support proposal number two. In the back. Uh, Russell Stavessler, commercial fisherman. Uh, I support proposal two. Joe, yeah, Joe McCary, I support uh, proposal two. Okay. Dan Egan, I support proposal number two. Yes. John McDonald, proposal number two. John Darney, I support number two. <coughs> yes. Mike Shirley, I support number two. In the back. Rick Moyer, support number two. Kevin Sullivan, support number two. <clears throat> Any other comments for commercial men here? Moving on. <clears throat> so now we're moving on to the shellfish section. This is for wealth management. The uh, first, the first, uh, first one is to amend the wealth measurement minimum size measurement. That's in Part Four, of Shellfish, Section Four Point Nine F. The proposed language would uh, eliminate the shell length as used as a metric to measure wealth, and it puts uh, puts specific language as to how the wealth will be measured. Any comments on this wealth proposal? To clarify your question, is the five, negating the five to three eighths length, is that to simplify for law enforcement or is there science behind that as well? That is to simplify for law enforcement. Yeah. Uh, Ken Marco, commercial fisherman. Um, I do not support this proposed change because I find the two bullet points to be contradictory. When you define the minimum size as Three is width. The definition of width is the distance between the widest point of an object. And then the second bullet point, you say you have to lay the well flat. But when you lay it flat, the outside of the swirl, about an inch high, is up against the measuring board. And that's not the widest point. The widest point is the very edge, which is when the conch is sitting, say, on a 10 degree angle or so. So I think if we want to stay at three inch width, there shouldn't be any uh, orientation rules that say you have to put it one way or the other. If you're saying I have to measure it where it's not quite <coughs> at its widest point, and that's not the way. Um, I find anything about the orientation of a well to be very confusing and making me measurement very difficult. I know it's not going to be for this year, but for that reason, I would I would support some kind of physical gauge, something where the conch goes through, it's no good. If it doesn't go through, it's good. I was there's different options in different states. Massachusetts has a shoot gauge. Virginia uses a ring. Well, I would support either with the caveat that DEM and fishermen work together with samples to figure out what gauge size corresponds to this three inch width. I don't want any change in the gauge. Um, but in the whelk fishery, we handle more organisms than a claw hogger does. And a claw hogger is a very simple rack system that makes it very easy to size. These things are not easy to size. It's quite time consuming. So I just think this definition is very complicated, and I just don't find it as any improvement over what we had before. <clears throat> and also with the whelks, I think there should be a breakage allowance. The leading edge of the shell, where the widest point is, is very, very fragile. I mean, I think every photo whelks can attest to that. 
and three other states, three states with, the, I think as far as I know, some of the biggest wealth, wealth fisheries, Massachusetts, Virginia, and Delaware, all allow us very a small breakage allowance. I mean, every time you handle these things, the edge is a chip. Therefore, when enforcement is going through your catch and measuring them, there's going to be a few chips, and you're going to have a few wealth that went from three inches to just under. And I don't think fishermen should be punished for incidentally landing a, 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 a wealth that is a little shorter because the edge shipped off. Yes, I suppose Mr. Lake, where did that as well? What was your name, sir? Could you state your name, sir? Yeah. Yes. Bob Burke on commercial fishing. I support just the way it was, the three-inch diameter and a five and three-eighths. It's complicated enough as it is. So, Ron Kenyon, uh, I support keeping a status quo as well uh, for basically the speed of handling. It's a lot easier to measure a length than it is a width, to be honest, when you're on that boat. <coughs> yes? Can we set status quo, please? Yeah, Al Eagles. You know, at that meeting, we were discussing how to measure it. There were so many opinions and so many options. And that was a horrific meeting to try and figure out how to measure these things. So. You know, what Ken was saying about measuring this three inches is you've got to come up with something more defined than how to measure them before you really implement that, I think, you know what I mean? It's really tough. I mean, I use a set of calipers that are designed to measure Jonah crabs. It works pretty well, but it's a digital set of calipers. But you can rotate it and get different measurements. You can keep rotating and get a, a, a wider measurement. So very controversial here. So, I think some more research had to be done and work with the fishing industry and how to come up with a proper measurement for this. Thank you. Yeah, Russell Sylvester, I support the status quo. <coughs> Dan Egan, I support status quo. Yep. John McDonald, status quo. Any other comments on uh, wealth management minimum size? Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Somebody mentioned circumference earlier. I know. I think it was mistakenly in there before. There's nothing about it. Is there anything about circumference? Because a three-inch circumference is actually really small. No, it, it, that was a mistake. It was I thought so. so. That, yes. All right. Moving on. Seeing no other comments. Okay, so the next uh, wealth management proposal is a uh, proposed adoption of a wealth pot tagging program. Uh, they I would advise everyone to take a look at the annotated regs. I will go through the basics right now. Uh, this would establish a commercial wealth pot tagging program. It'd be administered similar to the lobster trap tag program. It would maintain a 300 pot limit that is already on the books. It would allow for 10% extra routine lost tags, just like lobster, so you could order up to 330 tags, 30 of which would be for routine loss. It would be a fashionable single-use tags, like the lobster tags. Tags cost approximately 14 cents per tag. That cost is borne by the license holder. Tags are proposed to be valid between March 1st through the last day of February annually. This rule would take effect in 2020. And again, all the proposed for all of the changes, please see the notice to annotated language. Any comments on the wealth tagging, pot tagging program? That's question. Now, if you have a federal permit, a lobster trap permit on your vessel, and you're fishing in state waters, uh, I think the law requires that you have your lobster trap tag in your conch pots, your wealth pots. How is this going to work? Uh, interact with the uh, federal permit owners. If you have a state license only, you don't have to have that uh, qualification. So how is this going to play out with your federal permit holders? To clarify, if you are a federal permit holder fishing from the federally permitted vessel, 
the federal rule would be more restrictive in that case if you were a if you were fishing on your state license on a non-federally permitted vessel you would abide by state rules Any comments on the wolf tagging program, Joe? That question. Ballot from March through February annually. So this is like a whole nother tagging schedule for the next to keep track of. This is the proposed whelk tagging year, March first to February twenty. Yeah. Can you write it coincidentally with like lobster tags? To me, just so that the killnets run a certain schedule, whelks can run a certain schedule, lobsters can run a certain schedule, can't get something that kind of goes together so it's not for ordering tags once a month. You certainly take comments on the season start date for this. Okay. Yeah, clarifying question. Where does the 10% extra routine loss when yeah. most of us are going to lose gear? It's a lot more than 10%. Uh, to clarify, this is new territory for us. We uh, we modeled this on our lobster tagging program, which that is the allowance for routine loss. Ken Murgo. Um, I second that. Your loss in this fishery can be a lot more than 10%. If we're only going to be allowed 10%, we also need a catastrophic loss provision like is in the lobster industry. I would rather see a higher percentage for gear loss. I mean, 10% is usually a minimum on a season for us. So you can, I'm sure other people will mention. I also don't support it in general because I don't see it as being enforced. From what I see, the buoy laws aren't enforced, and those are on top of the water. So. Until there's effective enforcement, I don't see the time or money of us going through this tagging program as being worth the effort. <clears throat> yeah, I second what Ken was saying. It seemed like at the last meeting, most of the fishermen weren't really in favor of getting the tags. Yes. Ron Canyon, I'd go with the status quo as well. Any other comments on commercial wealth pot tag? Seeing one. Yeah, one comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, with what Ken said, uh, if this tagging program does go through, I think there should be that option for catastrophic tags for the guys who lose a lot of gear during the season. That would give them the option. Of, Get a new set of tags and up in their string. I think it's a good idea. Thank you. All right, moving on. This is lobster trap tag management, and this is a division proposal to replace the original lobster trap tags ordered but not initially received with catastrophic tags in the event the tags were not received and the presumed lost. Uh, and presumed loss. So basically, if you don't get your tags in the mail, we will allow you to use your catastrophic tags instead. Any comments on lobster trap tag management? Seeing none, moving on. Okay, and so uh, this is for the upper Narragansett Bay trolling area. Uh, this is a division clarification of open and closed periods of the upper Narragansett Bay trawling area to trawling. This is part six, general equip equipment position, <coughs> 6.82CI, one, sorry. Uh, so the area is already open for trawling July 1st through November 1st annually, except on weekends and holiday. As, written, as it is written in rule, it is not clear that the area is closed to trawling the remainder of the year from November 2nd through the 30th. Uh, we put forth uh, some language to clarify that. Uh, you can see that below. Additionally, while we were going through the language, we were also looking at the map and uh, we, we had some issues with the map. Uh, one in that it, had, it referred to two different navigational, uh, navigational beacons Sorry, so first, first off, I would like to take comments on the proposed language to clarify the closed period for the upper Narragansett Bay trawling area. <clears throat> Seeing none, 
we can move on to the next one. So like I said, as we were going through the periods, we also uh, felt that some clarification was needed for the area description of the upper Narragansett Bay trawling area. Uh, as written, the description was unclear uh, in the area of Hog Island and the Mount Hope Bridge. It referred to a Hog Island shoal light and a Hog Island light. Uh, there, were, there was some confusion as to what they were referring to as the Hog Island light. Uh, it was thought maybe that that could have been the Castle Island light and the name changed. Uh, we went through this and uh, we have noticed this red ash area as part of the upper Narragansett Bay trawling area. I can tell you that we've done some further vetting and looked into our uh, now repealed maps section, which is right here. And uh, this is, this is our, what we had on the books in our maps section. The division actually feels that this is sufficient to describe the trawling area. But certainly we take comments if people think it is a good idea to include this into our uh, upper Narragansett Bay trawling area closure. Yep. I say the red pot is not a good area to drag. So, so we I'm sorry, sir, your name? Oh, John McDonald. Any other comments on the map for the upper Narragansett Bay Trump? Okay, great. All right, so moving right along, this is our uh, last slide, and this is an extension of the Gilnet tag valid dates. It's part six, section 6.83, I6. Uh, right now, the, uh, the new tags that we have, the orange uh, cow ear tags, would expire at the end of this year, 2019. The division is proposing that we extend the valid date of those tags to go through the entire year of 2020. These are the orange tags for state water gillnets. Any comments on extending the tag period for gillnets? Yes? James Perkins, I support any proposal that's going to have us not having to spend money on tags as much. Thank you. Yes, Josiah. Josiah, I support this. Any other comments? All right. Well, great. Thank you very much. Uh, since there are no further comments to be presented at this time, on behalf of the Department of Environmental Management, I would like to thank you for attending and, and for your comments. At this time, I declare this public hearing to be closed. Please be reminded that the public comment period will conclude uh, at 4 p.m. on May. Uh, sorry, March the 30th, and the Rhode Island Marine Fisheries Council meeting will take place on April 1st at 6 p.m and May 6th at 6 p.m. Thank you for coming.